love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Father, we thank you, God. We give you honor. We give you glory, Father. Let people not see this man, Father, Lord, but let the people see and hear your Holy Spirit. Speak, Lord, as only you know how to each one of your children. You know how to bring your word, Father, Lord, and to break down your word, Father, Lord. I bind up every spirit that would try to be on your people's mind, that would try to, Father, Lord, capture this word, that would try to come and steal this seed. I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I bind it up in Jesus' name. Every stronghold that would try to come, every fortified strong man that would try to come, right now I rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. The blood of Jesus is against you. I decree and declare that this word would heal, that this word would deliver, this word would set free. I decree that this correction will be accepted in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you the honor and the glory forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. In, in Thessalonians 5.23, uh, I want to show you a breakdown of our bodies. Apostle Paul speaks of our bodies being made of three distinct components. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and whole and undamaged. Consecrated to him. Set apart for his purpose. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You hear that? I want you guys to take notice of the order that went in. It says, now may your body be kept, or sorry, like, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and your soul and your body be kept complete, be found blameless. So that order, first spirit, second soul, third body. Amen? Uh, I always tell you guys how God always bring me corrective words of what he's displeased with in our lives or in our church. So this is a corrective word. Most of my messages are corrective word. And sometimes it hurts and, you know, but hear the word of the Lord. Because when we hear the word of the Lord, we prosper. Amen. Amen. What God wants to bring to us now, because because in this society, in this church, even God's church right now, we bypass the spirit and we bypass the soul and we go straight to the body right and 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 god says my my people all they're interested in is feeding their body you know we feed our body with natural food but even our our prayers our even if we fast it's for lord give me Lord, if I can just attain here, if I can just get this job, if you can just bless me, I'll be happy. Feed me, feed this flesh, Lord. Feed this, and then I'll be happy. And that's all just body. It's always feed my body, Lord. Our prayers. And the church, is, 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 it really takes a lot of responsibility because the church has become, become uh, flesh-feeding factories. Come to church, give your tithes, and God will give you your life that you want. God will feed this body. But did you know that your body is the least important thing that you own? Out of your spirit and your soul, your body is the least thing that you own. People do not get that this is temporary, that God, you, tell your neighbor that you are, you are a soul. God created you a soul first. Then he wrapped this flesh, this body around it and, and sent you to this earth with a purpose. <laughs> tell your neighbor you have a purpose. So, how then did it get to us just feeding this body? It's this body, this body. 
when the most important thing that you own is your soul and we don't feed it come on it's quiet in here tell your neighbor the most thing the most important thing I own is my soul many of people are gonna sit here and they're gonna go on this earth and they're gonna fight for this I want this show I want the, I want to dress this way I want this house I want this I want this they're gonna fight all their life you, don't, you listen you, you don't know the number of years, years that God gave you you're gonna fight for your life just to get the judgment to go that was all for nothing that was all for nothing did you know that your soul your soul can't drive a car your soul can't live in a house it'll walk straight through it it can't it can't be contained in a in a physical uh, uh, in a physical place. Amen? Amen? Your soul can't be fed with the latest Nikes, with the latest gear. It can't be fed with that. So we're gonna break this down. God gave me revelation on how do we how do we do? So we gotta change. We have to change so that we understand. And I'm and listen, I'm not saying that it's nothing, it's, it's, it's something wrong with us wanting those things. But when your wants and your desires are more than God, when we selfishly play, pray to God, Lord, I, I want this, fix my life, fix, 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 fix. But you're not here. God, listen, I don't want to say, God, God cares about your, your natural life, but he don't care about your natural life. You understand? He cares, but he don't care. That's not his main objective. His main objective is your soul. We got to get this. We got to get this. Your soul is the most important thing that you own on this earth. And, and I'm telling you, nobody ever really teaches this. It's just, hang on, God, I'm going to bless you physically. What about my physical problems? What about my money? What about this? What about this, Lord? What about my health? What about this? What about that? What about... That's not important. What's important is your soul. Oh, wow. So notice the order God, I mean, uh, Paul said, he says, spirit, soul, and body. Satan always perverts what God does, right? So he reversed it. Body first. This is all we can see. This is what we can feel. So this is why people have habits. This is why people fulfill their, the, just fulfill yourself, make yourself feel better. Go masturbate. Go watch pornography. Go do this. Smoke weed. Fulfill me. I feel, fulfill me. Fulfill me. Go fulfill yourself. What's in the house? God wants to bring correction today. Can God correct you? Yes. Ask your neighbor, can God correct you? Somebody just said, nope. We forget the importance of, our, of, of what we we, we, we we have lost value in what's really important, our souls. The important of feeling, of feeding. Your, your soul don't need material stuff. Again, many people, it's, it's going to fight, 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 fight. Lord, give me this, give me this. All the getting the judgment, stand in line and go, that was for nothing. What did it benefit you? It was for nothing. Lord, give me just a make my job. I just if you just if you can give me this, let me attain this. I'll be happy. But you won't. You won't because God first created you to be a soul. No matter how many times when we we were stealing this stuff, no matter how many times we stole and back in our days and, and manipulated. You, every time I took money from people and I did this, I never had a satisfaction because it never satisfied my soul. My soul was always saying it's something more. It's something more. There's something inside of me. God was saying, I created you to be better than this. What are you doing? Amen. So we're going to talk about it in the order that we look at. Body, soul, and spirit. We, Of course, we know that this body is our physical, right? We see this, this is the this is the, the thing we see, this is the thing that, that we want to please the most because we are as as natural beings, we are we are 
are seeing beings, we want to we want to see it. That's what Scientology is all about. I believe it when I see it. It's basically what they say. Prove to me. Let me see it with my own eyes, and then I'll I'll believe it. But we could turn around and say that the Earth and everything was built by 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 destruction, by a, by a, a, a bomb. What do they call it? Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. We can believe that, but we can't believe there's a God. Oh, okay. What God wants you to see is that this soul, I mean, that, that this uh, body that you have, this is, it is a part of you, but it's not what defines you. It's not what's supposed to find, define you, let me say that. In fact, it, it's, it's not the real you. Tell your, tell your neighbor this body is not the real me. In fact, let me give you the, the name of the of, of the uh, the title of the of the sermon. It's it's called feeding the wrong you. Subtitle: Body, Soul, and Spirit. Feeding the wrong you. Brother Casey, he can lay off the Catholic courts. <laughs> <laughs> Joking with you, Brother Dean. Uh, one kingdom point God wants to make is that this body does not define who you are. It should not define you. Are. And in fact, when you come to Christ, the one thing that God, the first thing that God at, at, had me to do was, was Sacrifice. This is what he's talking about. Sacrifice this flesh. God demands a sacrifice. Uh, for some of us, we know that we've been fasting, right? And I'm, I'm still fasting. I'm going to stay on the fast for a while, the Daniel fast, probably for a few months, maybe even more. But your flesh has fought you. When you say, I'm going to fast, do you notice how your flesh fights you? You say, I'm not going to eat any sugar. You get, oh my goodness. First of all, you go through withdrawal, you get the biggest headaches. Some of us addicted to food. We're addicted to sugar. We're addicted to, if you can't let that go, this fasting and praying is for you. It's not for God. The Bible says these come out by fasting and praying. Certain spirits that are fleshly, that are tied to your flesh, they are, do you notice they're the hardest to come out? Why? Because your mind, your will and your emotion I tied to those. It's tied to that feeling. It's tied to, I, I've been smoking for 10 years. How do I give that up? You hear a voice, I used to smoke Newport 100 down to the filter. Brother Kevin was making fun of me. I, they took a picture of me going in my pocket like this. Brother Kevin said, Newport 100 down to the filter. <laughs> I, I, what, what, when I, I wanted to be free from it, but I, I, had to, I, had to, I had a feeling inside saying, how can I live without this? I'm addicted. Every time I eat, I feel a feeling I got to smoke. When I wake up, I got to smoke. But Jesus set me free with one touch. Wow. Literally, one touch. Man of God touched me, it wiped the feeling off of me. Literally, I didn't have no more feeling to smoke. Wow. None. It's about what you, God, listen. God is not even about, so God is so just, God, you know, what I, you know when God set me free? When I said, Lord, I like smoking, and I don't want to let it go. <laughs> See, when, when I get honest, when you get honest with God, before, you know what I was doing? Smoking, then I quit, I get delivered set free. Wife made me mad, well, she made me mad. Let me go out here. Now, I'm smoking because of you. You did this to me. <laughs> you made me do this. You shouldn't have pissed me off. The truth is, I really wanted to smoke. Yes. The truth is, I really missed it. I wanted it. I wanted it more than I wanted God. Yes. That's the key. Huh. Fasting, as we talk, as past Kevin, Paul, it's a sacrifice. I, I think uh, Mama Chantel said that. I was hold on, I can't call you Mama because the millenniums get mad. <laughs> I was corrected by. Chantel said, don't you ever say that again. So forgive me, y'all. Said, that's y'all word for her. <laughs> oh, I tell you. 
Sent word through through Chantel, tell the prophet, don't ever call you. <laughs> Listen to Romans 12, 1 and 2. This is New Living Translation. It says, and so dear, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies, to give your bodies. And it said God was going to take your bodies. This is the only sacrifice God tells you to do. God, what did Jesus do? He gave his body. Yes. That's good. So guess what we got to do? This is the only sacrifice God tells you to do. He says, he says, I plead with you. I'm begging you. Apostle and, and this prophet is begging you. I'm, I'm pleading with you. Give your body. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he would find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. See, worship don't begin. Worship is not just here. True worship begins when you hit that door and the devil starts telling you, go get that marijuana. Go get this. You know what? My wife, she works, at, she works at night. I could easily be just cheating on her. She never know. The devil can tell me, go straight another woman. Get this right here. Nobody will never find out. And they probably won't. But God knows. God knows. See, that's a true sacrifice. Lord, I sacrifice this feeling. The Bible tells you that you're going to carry your cross. You got to carry your cross. I believe I put that scripture reference in here. Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 25 and 28 says, A person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. King James Version says, It's like a city with the walls broken down. To get that re catch that revelation, the city with the walls, without your walls, people could just attack you. Now imagine everybody, you got a place to live, right? How, how, how safe would you feel if you went home and all your doors and all your windows was knocked out? Could you sleep pretty good? Could you sleep good there? Nope. Well, don't, don't let you be in, in, in one of the bad parts. <laughs> I live in a pretty decent part and I, I just, I couldn't, just all the doors, all the windows, I don't, so anybody can just walk in? Wow. What this is saying is any devil can come in and do what they want to do to you. Because a person without self-control is like a city with, wall, with the walls like that. It's like, it's like a house with its walls so Satan can come and do what he wants, just like uh, 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 Pastor Kevin was talking about. When we let darkness in, when we have no self-control, that's darkness. That's a door in to us. And I'm going to warn Pastor Kevin again, you better stay out my messages. <laughs> I'll be sitting on base like, dang, here you go again. But it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking in this place. We didn't, we didn't talk, did we, Pastor? No, sir. Oh, gosh. We're moving on to the soul. This, again, is the most important thing that you have. This is, the soul is who you really are. Okay? It's really a part of your spiritual. We're going to get into that, too, the next, the next thing. This is your individuality. This is the, when Bible say, I am made in God's image. I am made in your soul. It's made in God's image. Yes. Your soul. Uh, your soul is also referred to as your heart. You know, the Bible says that, that uh, 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 these things, these sins, they come from your heart. Mm -hmm. They come from your soul. We ain't talking about your regular heart, the beats. Your fleshly heart. You're talking about spiritual. Your soul and your heart are as one. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart slash soul, for it, 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 it affects what you do. Your soul, catch this here, What's in your soul influences your body. What you allow to come in your soul influences your body. I'm going somewhere here. Mark 8, 34 through 38, it says, Then calling to the crowds to join his disciples, he said, If anyone wants to be my followers, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. Give up your own way. What, 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 is, what is the own way we're talking about? Your body. 
If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for the sake, and uh, for my sake, and the sake of the good news, you will save it. Listen to this. And what do it benefit you to gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? You know, you know what our answer is to God before today? Yes. This pornography worth my soul. The fresh new kicks are worth my soul. Pink is worth my soul. Don't worry to God. <laughs> Lord, a Benz, I sell my soul for Benz. No. This is worth my soul. Oh, we don't say it with physical words, but our actions show. Listen, Jesus is comparing the whole world. He didn't just say a city. Really, a city would be enough for us. We sell our soul quick. I'll be, I'll be, the, I'll be the person of Wow. The whole world, he says, nothing, even though if you gain the whole world, it's not worth losing your soul. Wow. That tells me that your soul is the most important thing that you own. Yes. Have we ever thought about it that way though? No. We just fleshly, Lord, feed my flesh. We never ask God to feed my soul. Wow. Feed my soul, Lord. I need my soul. Ask yourself, ask yourself, is this sin, whatever, whatever your tangle, is this worth my soul? Is this, is this, you put, you feel in the blank, you don't have to say it loud. Is, is Newport 100 smoking down to the filter worth my soul? It's 30 seconds of, whatever you get, 60 seconds, if you can last the longest, three minutes. Is it worth my soul? Glory to God. I might have just went too deep on y'all right there. I want you to ask yourself that. God wants you to ask yourself that within. Is this habit worth, because Jesus said, if I, if I get, listen, even if you get the whole world, that's a big thing, y'all know that? Right. It ain't just talking about the United States of America. It said the whole world. Russia? Y'all know Russia is, is three times bigger than the United States? Three times? Or is it four times? whole world isn't worth your soul. And what does it benefit you to gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth, he asking you, is anything worth your soul? Listen to this. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in glory, uh, in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. I want you to catch this because when when, when, when we die, these bodies, they stay on this earth. But guess what's going to go get the judgment? I want, God wants you to understand that this is temporary. The best you're going to get out of here, maybe 85 years, now, you, you're real good doing good if you, get, if you live 90. Okay? So after that, tell your neighbor that, you know, Apostle said, for real, for real. But tell your neighbor that the next life is forever, forever. <laughs> See, that's, you know I mean business when I say forever, forever. Do you understand? It ain't no sentence when God says you, you're doomed to hell. You're going to hell. Do you understand? There ain't no, okay, you got 10 years, and then you can come out and be with me. Tell your neighbor it's forever, forever. Forever, forever. And we got to catch that. You know, I was looking at a... Uh, it was a 13-year-old girl who was getting delivered and set free, and she was saying that how Satan, Satan convinced her he was going to make her a star. Wow. And Satan convinced her. That he, he actually told her. He was straight up with her. He said, look, he said, many people on this earth die poor and unhappy. He says, I'll make you happy and everything else. He said, I'll make you a star. He says, but he said, you're going to go burn in hell with me. But at least you'll be happy on this earth. And she said she, she fell for it. She said, okay, I don't care. I just want to be happy. But next... You're talking about 80 years? And more than likely, if you sell your soul to the devil, you're gonna die early. Yes. So you might not even, y'all know, know the rapper Little Uzi. Y'all know the rapper Little Uzi. This guy here, literally, literally, he, at his concerts, he's literally telling everybody, all y'all gonna burn in hell with me. He says, you big yeah. dummies. Yeah. And, she, and, and you heard the crowd say, uh-uh, some of the people are like, you know, uh-uh. He says, you big dummy, you already here. You listening to the music. 
you know that nobody left? Wow. Y'all look it up on YouTube. Yeah. He says, you, he says, what you think? He, he got on, he, he had other tapes. He says, what you think, little Uzi? He says, say little Uzi fast. What did he say? Little, little Uzi, little Uzi, Lucifer. Wow. He says, it means Lucifer. And he says, y'all big dummies, why y'all still following me? Wow. Wow. He, says, he says, let's ride. We all going to hell. Let's ride. Wow. He said, oh, you're using burger language. Yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. Here's proof that your soul will leave your body. Listen to this. This is, this is the story of Rachel. Rachel was uh, having a child in the, in the Bible, and uh, as she was having a child, she died, okay? This is Genesis 35, 18. It says, and so it was, as her soul was departing from her, for she died, that she called his name, talking about her, the, the, the newborn baby, uh, Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Euphrath, that is Bethlehem. Okay, you hear that? Soul. As she was dying, her soul departed from what? This flesh. So why are we feeding this flesh? Because the soul is the one that's gonna go to judgment. What are you feeding your soul? Ask your neighbor, what are you feeding your soul? We feed it all this TV, all this mess. All this sexual stuff, BET, this, this right here, we're just feeding. And we're wondering why we got habits. I can't be set free, I wonder here. We come up here every Sunday. We get delivered, we go back out. Looking at all this manner of this foolishness on TV, feeding this flesh, feeding the anger inside of us, feeding the drama inside of us, because there's drama inside of you. In this flesh, the Bible says there's no good thing within this body. No good thing. Now we're going to the spirit. Then God gave me this revelation here because I've, I've never seen it and looked at it this way before. He gave me this revelation. The spirit can be looked at can, can be looked at as that's the nature. Look at it as the nature you were born of. It's almost like the family that you were born in. Spirit. Just as the body becomes one with whatever you feed it naturally, the soul becomes one. With whatever you feed it spiritually. Wow. There's a famous saying, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Just like a body, you are what you eat, right? Mm -hmm. Eat a bunch of sweets, I'm hips on the raglan side begin to stretch. <laughs> Start eating plants, you lose about 15 pounds, 20 pounds in a couple weeks. You are what you eat. Say, I am what I eat. I am what I eat. I'm gonna talk to you, I mean, uh, I wanna go to Luke 9, 52 through 56. Listen to here, I want you to look at this example. It says, one day he sent his messenger, talking about Jesus. One day Jesus sent his messengers ahead to reserve rooms for them in a Samaritan village. But they were turned away. The people of the village refused to have anything to do with them because they were headed for Jerusalem. When, when word came back of uh, what had happened, James and John said to Jesus, Master, shall we order fire down from heaven to burn them up? Jesus turned and rebuked them, saying, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. Wow. And they went to another village. Wow. You see that? You don't know what manner of spirit you are of. That's not my spirit. Wow. He goes on to say, I didn't come to destroy. The son of man didn't come to destroy people. See, that's the spirit of revenge right there. He's saying that's from Satan. You've been influenced by Satan, so that lets us know we can be influenced by spirits, wow. good or bad. Wow. So let's catch this. Let's go over an overview. Your spirit influences your soul. Whatever spirit, if it's Satan's spirit, it influences your soul. Your soul influences the actions that your body do. Wrong spirit equals death. Right spirit equals life. And did you know, did you know when you have the right spirit, God's spirit in you, that you can conquer anything? Yes. Listen to, listen to this right here, this Proverbs 18, 14. Healthy soul, spirit, conquers adversity. But what can you do when the spirit is crushed? The spirit of a man sustains him in sickness. The Amplified Version says this. But as for, but, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? That's the same scripture, but two different 
You see that? You can't, you can't bear a broken spirit. But if you have a strong spirit, it says you can even bear adversity. You can bear, you can bear sickness. But if your soul is weak, you can't bear it. You can't handle it. That's why I, I just can't take it. I, didn't, I can't have it. You don't have nothing in you. you you're, you're of the wrong spirit, like Jesus said. That's not of my spirit. Fear is not of my spirit. Are you guys hearing me? I'm going to say it again. A healthy spirit slash soul because your spirit ties. Remember, your spirit ties. And also you can have what you call soul ties. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's spirit can tie with your spirit mm -hmm. and your soul. Huh? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, this is what God says. Don't have premarital sex. Mm -hmm. Do y'all notice? You notice, you notice how I notice with every, every relationship I've been in, that woman begins to act like me. They begin to say the same mannerism, the same words I use. I mean, I used to always say, man, you jiving. I heard her say, you jiving, what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll begin to use it. If you use the word cold-blooded, now I'm using it. Mm -hmm. Because your soul ties. Mm -hmm. Your soul ties with that person. Even in friendship, your soul ties. You begin to have mannerisms as your friend. So who you hang around with is very important. It's who you become. The Bible tells you that in Proverbs. It says the companion of fools shall be injured. But the companion of the wise to prosper. So the question is, what are we feeding our souls? And what should we be feeding our souls? Have anybody ever wondered why and you can say words don't hurt me. You know, you, you know, you know one, of the, one of the biggest rhymes that, that's a lie. Sticks and, Sticks and stones. stones may hurt my bone, but words will never hurt me. That's a prideful person that said that. They made, it, made that up. That's somebody who was hurt. Because I'm going to tell you something. Hurt words hurt you worse than sticks and stones. Some, some, some things have been said to me, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've said some things that made somebody. But some things have been said to me that I wish I, I, I would have got shot. I would take a bullet before that. That's how hurtful it was. So much and so that it happened 10, 12 years ago and I can still remember it like it just happened. And Satan will try to bring it back to me. You remember when that person said this to you? For unforgiveness. Hold that unforgiveness against him, her. Hold that. You remember when he said you'll never be nothing. So you know what happens? Just like me, I begin to have a hard heart. I begin to... I don't care what nobody think about me. I don't need nobody to hang around. All right, Laurent? <laughs> I don't need nobody. It's useless. I'm good. I'm by myself. Been by myself. I don't need nobody. But it's not true. It's not true. God created you to need somebody. He didn't create you to be isolated. Satan loves to isolate you. Says nobody care for you. Garage. God created, the whole point I'm making is God created our souls to be nourished, to be nurtured and nourished with words. Just like our body eat for food, our soul eat words. It eats words. Our soul should be literally eating the words of God. Where are the words of God found? In the Bible. Because our soul feeds, it lives so some of our souls are dying because you ain't fed it. Wouldn't you die if you didn't feed your natural body? So what water are you giving? You can live without food for a long time, but what about water? We never even give our, our souls any water every day. The water of the word of God. And we wonder why we're thirsty. We wonder why we're depressed. Because you're, you, you're of the wrong spirit. You are of the wrong spirit, like Jesus said. Yeah, that's not my spirit influencing you. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere. Let's, I'm, I'm going to say about five different verses. They're all Proverbs. Proverbs, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just read with the Proverbs. Now, Proverbs 15.4, Proverbs 16.24, Proverbs 18.20, Proverbs 11.17, and Proverbs 25.18. These are all about words, and there's many more. Listen, this shows you that words affect you. It says, gentle words bring life and health. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Mm -hmm. 
The next one, kind words are like honey sweet to the soul. You hear that? And healthy for the body. See, soul, and then when it gets to your soul, it brings health to your body. Wow. Because your soul feeds your body. Proverbs 18, 20, words satisfy the soul as food satisfy the stomach. The right words on a person's lips bring satisfaction. You notice how when you come and ask the prophet or you ask the apostle or one of the pastors of the church, Pastor Kevin, for something and they, and they begin to speak life into you from God's spirit. That you get enlightened, you just get something, man, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm encouraged. But when you leave out of here, it's a different story. That's when the battle begins. I can encourage you all I want right now and say, man, you can do it. You don't have to do it, man. I'm not going back to pornography. But when that feeling comes to you, when that body begins to say, feed me, you've been feeding me for 15 years. You've been feeding me for 20 years. Yeah, I remember that, that one show them plants say, feed me. Can't remember the name of that show. Seymour. Seymour. Plant. Nah, that's not the name of the show, but that was huh? Little Shot of Horror. Thank you, Brother Pastor Casey. <laughs> okay. Here's Proverbs eleven seventeen. It says, Your soul is nourished when you are kind, but you destroy yourself when you are cruel. Wow. Uh oh. When you are kind, how? How do you be kind? How do norm I'm a low person. It's normally words, right? How do you, how do you normally be cruel? Words. Words. Yeah, that's talking about words right there. Your, your own soul, listen to this. Your own soul is nourished when you are kind. But you destroy yourself when you are cruel. Lord knows I've been cruel to some people. Our words, boy. Cruel. And I was destroying my soul, putting more evil in it, getting more bitter. And every word I spoke, bitterness. Because God was saying the whole time, son, you have the wrong spirit. You have the wrong spirit. Yeah, you're telling them truth, but you're telling them truth with your love. So you're injuring them. It's got to be told with my love, my spirit. From my point of view. Look at Proverbs 25 and 11. It says, telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe, wounding them with a sword, or shooting them with a sharp arrow. Your words. Your words. I want to say this because because of the fall of man, every woman, child, boy, girl, we were born with a sinful nature. Right. A sinful spirit was influencing us yeah. since we've been here on this earth. But the good news is Jesus died and he says, yeah. I came. I'm not going to take that sinful spirit from you, but I'm going to put my spirit... Side by side, and I want you to choose. I want you to sacrifice your body and choose me. Oh, God is speaking in this place. And listen, let me tell you something. God, God will be real. He said, every spirit has a mind associated with me. Every spirit. Whether it's evil or good. You have what? The carnal mind. That's a fleshly spirit. That's when we view from just fleshly stuff. Then you have the mind of Christ, the Bible speaks of. The carnal mind is always naturally at war with God's. It says it's never, it never did want to obey God's law. So it's, in fact, it says that you're going to go to grave, I'm paraphrasing, but you're going to go to grave with this, these two battles happening on the inside of you. The carnal mind is always hostile against what God wants. Right. That's good. It, it never did, it says it never did want to obey. It never did, and it never will obey, in fact, it says. It never will obey God. So God calls for a sacrifice. I want to see which one you want more. Some of us have found out that fasting wasn't that bad. But isn't it, isn't it funny when you first start off, it's like, I feel like it's the end of the world. I feel like it's like, end of the world, I can't eat. God just said a week, in fact, he even gave it later light on, you can actually eat something. He didn't even tell you. He knows some of us ain't going to make it if we just said no food. Lord have mercy. It was over with before we even started. I ain't doing that. I, ain't just, I, I can't do that. God made a light on us and said, just eat vegetables. Wow. 
And even that, oh my God, I can't eat my favorite Snickers. I can't eat that. It's just a week. <laughs> wow. I'm going to tell you something. Your flesh, your body is like a little child. You have to treat it like a little child. Because as soon as you say, you notice it. Tell you, tell you what you call I, I started my cardio this week. I said, I'm going to do two miles. Get to doing two miles. You start hearing your body. You ain't got to do that, man. You did good yesterday. You ain't got to do all that. What you doing, man? I said, shut up. Die, flesh. Die. I just kept on going. I, I felt like I wanted to quit, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Because I wanted to, I wanted to press that button. I got close to it a couple times. I heard say, no, push. Push. I kept on going. So I got my minutes over with. That's how you show the body I'm in control of you. When I say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. Yes, you know your child, when I tell you to do something, do it. That's how you got to do your flesh. Because it's going to always rise up and try to show you, I've been in control. Girl, please. I've been in charge of you for 30 years. You're going to do what I tell you to do. I'm not, that's it. I'm not masturbating no more. As soon, soon as you get home, before Sunday even ends, we done done it. Because, because, because that flesh, it, it try, it's, it's going to try you. Yes. The nature of your flesh is going to try you. It's hostile to what God says. So let me throw this feeling on you and see what you're going to do then. Right. Wow. You know that feeling. Everybody got that feeling in their spine when you hit that, that special part in your neck. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, you're just sitting there walking. Down, so, oh. <laughs> you go to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> go relieve myself a little bit. Make myself feel better. Forgive me, Lord. Just, just one last time. Forgive me. Then all of a sudden, condemnation comes on us. Oh, you can never do nothing right. You always, so just quit. Just forget it. Just, just, just leave. Just go. It ain't no sense in you going to church. You messed up again. Wow. Listen to this here. Some of, and some of us are wondering why we're having battles inside of us. It's because we are of the wrong spirit. Romans 12 and 2. It says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. This shows you about the mind. Remember I said every spirit has a mind? It says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. In King James Version, it says, by renewing your mind. Then you will learn to know God's will, which is, God, which is good and, and pleasing and perfect. Many people always ask me, Apostle, what's God's will for my life? The reason why you don't know is because you're not feeding your soul. God gives us a promise of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the church have turned into, oh, seek God for it. How can you seek somebody for a promise? He says, I promise to leave you the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So why are we seeking and tearing for it? Feed your soul, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Begin to feed your soul. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all looking at me too hard. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, feed your soul. Feed your soul. Say it's hungry. It's hungry. You know how y'all get when you get out here? Hey, it take it too long. I'm hungry. When you gonna say that about your soul? When you gonna say that about your soul? I'm shopping too much. I'm hungry. I'm masturbating too much. I'm hungry. I'm gonna feed my soul. I got too much anger. Oh, okay, I'm gonna preach to myself. Maybe some of us are religious, so I'll do it. To me up, to me up, brother Casey. And I heard uh, the Bible say, uh, "He that dwelleth." Ha. Make that breathe in the righteousness of God shall dwell in. Oh. See, y'all woke y'all up then. See, some of y'all want to stand up. Come on. So, you know what I think? You know what's amazing? I used to always sit there as a child and the pastor preached like that. And then, you know, my father and mother, oh, he preached. What, what did you get out of it? I didn't hear nothing. He just spoke me. It's not like he had asthma to me. Said, where did that come to be preaching? That's strange. That's something that you learned and you taught yourself. Oh, God. And many don't have the power to set free after the hoot and holler. And I'm not saying they're wrong in the sin, the hoot and holler, but where's your power afterwards? Where's the display of, of power of God? Oh, Because we can hoot and holler, but who got delivered? Who got set free? 
Your hoot and holler ought to transform some lives. This is why we teach here. And unless, so listen, I'm, I've said to my own self, it's mm, mm good. <laughs> well, you supposed to tune up on me on that one. <laughs> I said it's mm, mm good. <laughs> like Campbell's soup says. <laughs> Feel my help, so I'm doing that. Start to it up. <laughs> Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you not by removing the demons out of you, but transform you by changing the way you think. The way we think is the greatest battle. You know why? Because the way we think is influenced by all the stuff we've been through. The rape and the father leaving us and this happened to me and my mom did this to me and it's influenced and God says, you have stinking thinking, my son and my daughter. I need to transform you by the way you think by getting you into my word and giving you my spirit. When I give you my spirit, then it's going to transform your mind. I remember me and an apostle talk about this now to this day. Well, imagine how, the, how stupid we thought. I just call it stupid. Mm -hmm. We used to think so stupid back in the day. Yeah. Really think God, I mean, I would, I would really think that God, I mean, I mean, just, just crazy stuff. Like, Lord, I go in there, my credit messed up. Lord, 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 let somebody else's credit report come up. <laughs> Lord, please, I'm, I'm praying seriously that God's going to let somebody else's credit report. So I'm asking God to steal from me. <laughs> Cheat, God. Cheat, God. Oh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Guess what? My, my credit report always pulled up. <laughs> 30 pages long. <laughs> and they'd come and take me to the back and show me the two cars I was approved for. <laughs> On the flat, can't start, they gotta jump on. <laughs> oh, man. When your desires of your flesh is greater than the desires of God, you have just given Satan the power and perm permission to subdue you. That's why it says a, a, a person with a, without walls, I mean, sorry to say, well, a person without self-control is, is like a city with broken down walls. It's like a, wind, a house without windows and doors. Picture yourself sitting in your house today with no windows and doors. First of all, you're going to be cold. Then you're not going to be able to sleep because of the cold. And then you're not going to be able to sleep because somebody might just walk in and steal everything. Oh, God. Tell your neighbor, stop feeding the wrong you. Say, feed the real you. Say, your soul is at stake. Not your body, your soul. Your body is not going not, not gonna to end up in hell, your soul. This is helping somebody. I feel it in the spirit. It's breaking walls. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 16. It says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his what? Spirit. Not by his body. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that, own, that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. So can Satan know your thoughts? If you got his spirit. Yes. Mm. That's good. Somebody asked that before. And we have received God's spirit, not the world spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. When me and apostle speak to you, when the pastor speak to you, we don't tell you things that come from our human wisdom. We, uh, we, we tell you God's words using his spirit to explain the truth. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. In other words, people who don't have God's spirit can't receive. It all sounds foolishness to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. But they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. Now, 
I'm almost finished here. I'm going to give you guys two examples of the wrong way of thinking and what I fleshly do that's in the Bible. And then I'm going to show you with Jesus. Jesus' temptations. Jesus' temptations, he went through everything. He passed every test of the, what did it say? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Satan tested him with all three of those things. I didn't realize that until I studied this. And he overcame them. So God says, I overcome that so you can overcome it. He said, I sacrificed myself, and it was even to death. You don't even have to die, but it only feel like we're going to die. Mm-hmm. But guess what? You are going to die. Your body's going to die. It's going to get lower when you fast. And your spirit's going to come up. I can't hear God speaking to me because you're feeding yourself. You're of the wrong spirit. Oh, God. Look at Luke 12, 13 through 21. Really, y'all can read the whole thing, to, uh, 12. Y'all can read the uh, Luke 13 through 34, because I'm, I'm going to skip from 21, 22. I'm going to go all the way to 33 and 34, because, you know, just for the sake of time, it was too long. It says, then someone called from the crowd. This is the wrong example. Then once someone called from the crowd and said, teacher, please tell my brother to divide my father's estate with me. Jesus replied, friend, who made me judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware, explanation point. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story, a parable, of a rich man. He says, a rich man had a fertile farm that produced the fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have any more room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have enough room to store all my wheat and other goods, and I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very day, this very night, your soul is required in heaven. Wow. Wow. And then God goes on to say, this, 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 this very night you will die. The very night your soul is required in heaven. It says, then who will get everything you worked for? Wow. Yes, a person is a fool to, stir up earth, to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Wow. See, a lot of us, go, we get to our end of life. It's people who are dying right now. They live their life and they chased all this stuff. But now, God says, you fool. Your soul is required in heaven. This very night, you planned all this stuff. You built all these bars, and now you got all this corn, and you said, I'm going to live another. I ain't got to do nothing. I'm going to be cheap. God says, you fool. This very night, your soul is required in heaven. Before my throne, you're going to come and talk to me. Oh, that's deep right there, y'all. Then we're going to see what your fool is going to do. What did you do when God asked him, what did you do for the kingdom of God? Stored up corn. Because the corn wasn't even for nobody else. It was for him. Selfishness. I got all this corn. I'm not going to help nobody else. I'm going to build me a bigger barn. Then I'm going to chill out. That way I can retire. I don't know. He was feeding the body. He was more concerned with the body than his soul. It goes on when it jumps to 33 and 34. It says, sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven, and the persons of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be will, your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it, and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And let me tell you something: what you really got to watch for the enemy, because I, I mean, for a long period of time, like uh, y'all know, I have I have I have some of the guitars that's very expensive. And I'm talking about like car expensive, like $15,000 for one guitar. You know, every time I left the house, the devil will try to get, take your guitar with you, somebody gonna steal it. So take this with you, stay my do this. Stay my. It's voices inside of you telling you to protect yourself. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. I say to myself, I say, if they take it, God will replace it. So be it. If they take it, if they break in, listen, God will replace it. But if I get the fear in, Taking everything with me. My whole, my whole trunk pack. What's valuable? Let me get my wedding rings because that's diamonds. Let me get this. And, and man, I, I'm worshiping the things. 
This is what will make God so mad. How can we worship? How can you cut down a tree and worship it and say, you are my God. Speak to me. Save me. And you just carved it out of your own hands. That bitch guitar was made by a man, so how, can, how dare I worship it? Now I'm going to show you the temptation of Jesus and we're done. It says, this is in Luke 4, 1 through 13. It says then, I said Luke 4, 1 through 13. Yeah. It says, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Y'all hear that? He wasn't led by Satan. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Lord have mercy. Some of us can't even make one day. Tempted for 40 days? Wow. Jesus ate nothing at all that time. Wow. Mormon used to say nothing at all. Mm. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And became very hungry. Yeah. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become a loaf of bread. That's the first scripture that says lust of the flesh. Mm. Right? A craving for what? Physical pleasure. Right. Right. Tell, tell him. That's the first one. That's what our scripture said. I spoke of. A lust of the flesh. He tried to test them with lust of the flesh. Go oh, ahead, yeah, feed yourself. You know, I want some. You know, food will give you pleasure when you're hungry. You know, you get the. Mm, man. Can't eat it fast enough. But Jesus told him, how did, what did he answer with? The word. He answered with words. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says people do not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to, a, 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 to reveal to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them. This let you know that Satan owned these. The devil said, because they are mine to give anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you would just worship me. That's of the flesh. A craving for everything we see. He took him up to look at the kingdoms. Right? So, oh, man. This can all be mine, and that woman can be mine. If I steal this, this, this money can be mine. A lust, the Bible says for everything that's in this world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So you see, he was tested with the two things. Now here's pride. Jesus replied, the scripture said, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, the highest point of the temple, and said, if you are the son of God, Jump off. If you be a prophet, how come you can't heal your wife? If you be called by God, how come God allowing this to happen to you? Show me the power you got. Uh-oh. For the scripture says he will order your angels to protect and guard you. And they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot or a stone. This is the pride Pastor Kevin was talking about. He was trying to get Jesus to be prideful. Mm -hmm. Pride becomes before a fall and haughtiness before destruction. Haughtiness is look, your eyes prideful. Oh, you're a prophet. You're a prophet. Now nah, you could do this. You know, I, I, it, it grieves me even to this day when I see, I see the spirit of God. In, in fact, you know, devil always pervert the spirit of God and the, and the spirit of prophecy. God's spirit of prophecy said it's supposed to edify the saints. It's supposed to build them up, right? The spirit of prophecy. God's spirit is not in is your address, one, two, such and such and such. You got on, you, you, Brother Mark, you got Marcus, you got on black underwear right now. How's that edifying God? How's that building? That's showing off. You can see the pride on them. Oh, yeah, after you get something right. Am I right? Can I prophesy? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? It's all for a show. How is this giving God glory? So the spirit of prophecy gets turned into a, a, con a conjurum spirit. A conjurum is that's what I say. How do you say it? Spirit. Because did you know the devil can prophesy to you? Did you know the devil can prophesy to you? Oh yeah, he sees you too. So he knows. He knows you. God says you just put on this morning ribs in a slow cooker. <laughs> and everybody, ooh, ooh, oh my God. Am I correct, sir? It was two pounds of ribs, right? 
<laughs> How is this edifying? Do you understand what I'm saying? It grieves me to see this. Because that's not the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of showing off in this flesh and showboating. You know what God first told me when he told me? He said, you're going to be a prophet. He said, but don't you ever... He said, don't you ever name yourself. You, you never hear me say, how you doing, brother? Prophet Dion. Prophet Dion. <laughs> me, me and Deron went to a church before. We was like, we're going to see, because we don't know nothing but prophecy. Everybody name it. How you doing, sir? Prophet Jeremiah. <laughs> Just staring at me. I'm like, you going, okay, where you looking at me? <laughs> Prophet Jeremiah. Every, every time you shake my hand, yes. Apostle such and such. <laughs> Like, respect me. <laughs> but you know what? I want somebody to know my name by the power I display. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't have to say I'm a prophet. In fact, people always get us wrong. They always say, it's two twin prophets over there. And he's an apostle. Right. <laughs> Y'all don't see these two twin prophets. Because I'm not interested in my name being glorified. Right. I'm interested in God being glorified. Sure. Because guess what? When I begin to gloat like that, I'm saying that this is my power. And I can do nothing without God. That's why you got to watch. I'm so glad God don't. God will often tell us, send people to us and tell us. You know, every once in a while, God will send somebody to tell us. But I got to. I got to watch what I'm eating. Because when people be saying, "Man, you so accurate. You so such a really okay <laughs> accurate man," you got to watch because because it's what that's feeding pride the body. You got to watch it. So God don't let me see that. Uh, you know a lot. I'm glad He don't because pride will come over you. You'll begin to get prideful with your gift. And what does the Bible say? Pride comes before a fall. God comes before a fall. And pride comes before a fall. And haughtiness before, no. Haughtiness comes before destruction and pride before a fall. We got to watch it. What are you feeding? What are you feeding? What are you feeding most? Tell your neighbor, your soul is the most important thing you own. Not your car. Not your house. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children. Your soul is the most important. It's going to stand before God with judgment. This body going to stay here and, and it's going to return back to dust. Then your soul comes before judgment. And tell your neighbor that's forever, forever. I'll tell you, I said, I don't want to burn in hell forever, forever. Like, Lord, you ain't going to even give me a 10-year sentence. Right, give me 20 years and then let me come see you. No, forever, forever. God say, I sent this you forever, forever. Man, I fear that. Wow. Again, it says, and they will hold you up with their hands so that, so, so, so you won't even hurt your foot or your stone. That's the pride of life. Pride in achievement. Yeah, I am the son of God. I can. I can, I can do it. You know what we would have did? Man, I'll show you I got power. Man, please. In fact, I'm going to make you disappear now. Pride. What did Jesus respond? He says, the scripture also says you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil, listen to this right here. Because people think that's the only time that Satan, that Satan tempted Jesus. But, but, but it was more, this is the only story we get. It says, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus in every way. That's every way. Lust of the eye, lust of the fresh pride of life. It says, uh, when the devil finished attempting Jesus in every way, he left him until the next opportunity came. Wow. Man, I just keep going through tests because you keep failing tests. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, I begin to recognize a pattern in me. And Lord, I saw this before. This came a few months ago. This boss right here, I quit my job because this boss was a prick. But now this one is where I saw this before, Lord. God says, I'm trying to fix you. The adversity that's in our life now, saints, the adversity that's in our life now is so it can bring purity to our souls. God says, stop praying against it, because it's me. Stop praying against it, it's like it's Satan. No, Satan, I re no, God says it's me. Because Satan can't do anything. Satan came. Matter of fact, God asked Satan, hey, have you seen my servant? Have you seen my servant Job? God, Satan didn't say, what do you mean him? He said, have you seen him? Go ahead, test him. Because his soul becomes more pure when you pass the test. 
That's what God is interested in. Your soul. Stop thinking about and trying to feed and, and, and praying all these crazy fleshly uh, uh, dreams. Lord, give me this. Make my career this. Make me this right here. Yes, God will do it. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which means his right way of doing things. That's Matthew 6, 33. And all things shall be added to you. It also says, it also records that, that uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Wow. I've never seen somebody doing what God say do and they're hurting. Mm -hmm. And they're on the street begging bread or, or their children begging for bread. I've never seen anybody line up with God. That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. I've never seen nobody really try God and then they just, they just, I'm not blessed, I'm just hurt. I'm just not, no, no. You're feeding the wrong you. Stop feeding the wrong you because this flesh is gonna get you in trouble. It's, it's the reason that we all in trouble, that we've been in trouble, and that God got to get us out of it. And we still don't see that pattern. We steady feeding our flesh. You hear a voice? Get mad. You just get mad for no reason. How about speak back to that voice? No, I'm not getting mad. What are you? Sometimes I have to say to myself, what are you doing? Why are you mad? God has asked for a sacrifice of your body. Y'all hear me say D1. That's the old me. Sister Patricia, she said she had to sacrifice Pat. Right? That's a sacrifice. I have to sacrifice me speaking and wanting to say what I want to say all the time. Yes. Sacrifice. You hear the Holy Spirit say, shut your mouth. You hear the right spirit say, be quiet. But you hear the wrong spirit, they on both shoulders. Go ahead, tell them what you want. They gonna think you a punk. Mm. They gonna think you, they, gonna, they think you weak. <laughs> but God says, when, you, when they think you weak for the kingdom, I just promoted you. Wow. When you let somebody punch you in the mouth, in the kingdom of God, it's promotion. And here we're gonna call you punk. <laughs> oh, you see it, man, you let him just punk him out like that, man, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have did that. But God just saw that and says, turn the other cheek. I'm gonna elevate you, stand to your feet. God has used these things and what we're going through now to refine our souls. Challenges, this is a kingdom principle. Challenges are not to be prayed against. They'll be, they're to be passed. The test is to be passed. Stop praying to God. Lord, Lord, they're coming against me. No, they're coming against the God in you and God wants you to rise up. God wants you to handle it. You should not be reacting the same way somebody else would react. You shouldn't be reacting. You've been saved 13 years. You're acting the same way. You still, you still got curse words in your spirit. And God is saying, you, got, you have the wrong spirit. No, 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 no. Every time somebody gets you mad, you have these curse words and you want to say something. You want to say something hurtful because you got rejection in you. God says you have the wrong spirit. That's not my spirit right there. That part of you right there. See, you got my spirit on this side, but this part of you right here need my spirit. See, every time you get mad and you feel rejected, nobody is accepting and listening to you, you get angry. See, I'm trying to show you what's inside of you so that I can purify you. Because truth be told, I've been telling you to get rid of this for years, but you haven't done it. So God says, now it's my turn to step in. I'm going to help you. I'm going to force you to give it up. Because you know what? God says, I live forever. forever. You don't. It's your life that's going to come to the end. And you're going to say, oh my goodness. And God's going to say, son and daughter, what did you do for my kingdom? It better not be where I knocked down a building for myself and I stored up corn and I did everything. What did you do for my kingdom? Who did you invite? Who did you tell of my goodness? Who did you invite to church? When did you give money? When, show me one time you gave money, your, your tithes, and, and not grudgingly, and not mad. We have to stand account. Your soul is gonna stand account. You gotta get this in your spirit. Tell your neighbor again, my soul, my soul. is the most important thing that I own. Not my body. Say, I'm not, I'm gonna stop letting my body define who I am because it's not who you are. Thank you, Lord. You don't know how long God has given us in this life. 
You don't know how long you're trying to satisfy yourself and you're unhappy because of this and this didn't happen. I didn't get the job. I didn't get this right here. And you finally get the job. I've known people who finally got, who finally made it. And guess what? God tells them, you fool, your soul is required in heaven tonight. You're not going to even live to enjoy that house. You're not going to even live to enjoy that bins that you just bought. Who going to get your bins now? Who going to get it? You fool, God says. You value this body that I placed you in and I put your soul in over this soul? Soul first, flesh last, body last. Spirit, soul, body last. We have reversed it, body. And we stay right there. Lord, feed my body. Lord, give me what I want. Lord, make me happy. If I come to church, God will give me everything I want to get. God will make my life happy. God will make everything start, start functioning. I was talking to an individual, a brother, just feel led to tell his story. And a particular brother God had, had told that this is your wife, marry this person. Through a rhema, through a rhema word, marry this person had good intentions, went on, started, started, started actually, you know, planning a wedding, and something came up where you don't have it. And he, I was speaking to him, he says, man, when y'all prophesied to us, me, we were seeing, everything went well. Everything went well for a little while, then it just went to hell. What do you expect? What do you expect? You're sinning and living. What do you expect? God gave you a, when he prophesied, he prophesied that grace for that moment. Get yourself together. I'm gracing you to get yourself together. This thing right here, when you hear from a real prophet, a real apostle, you're not talking to Dion and Ron. God just told you what to do. So you best listen. Oh, it's going to be a penalty to pay. Yes, it's going to get worse and worse. Because you just disobeyed God. Oh, my God. Tell you, God is trying to speak in this place. He's trying to save you, a lot of you guys misery, a lot of pain. I'm just not ready to get myself. I'm not ready to get married. But you're ready to have sex and have a baby? She's good enough for that. You're good enough to have sex, but you can't marry a person? Oh, God. When the Bible says that a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from him, I just don't know. I just got. I gotta wait till I get a job, get myself together. I wish God, I wish God. You living together now? What you gotta wait for? Cause you know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make sure that your your body and your flesh feels good. I'm the supply. I'm the. But you're one when you become married. That means if I make a million and she makes one penny, a million to one is ours. And it's not you who is at stake. It's your children. For your children watching you. Hata 